Anyone who joins can join. Um, so welcome to the Future Frontline webinar for the dental team. Um, not that way. That's not the way around I was going to go. It does not like me. Good start. Good start. And go back to the beginning. So yeah, just some sort of housekeeping stuff, really. Um, unless you are currently speaking, just mics and cameras off, but it's set to do that anyway. Um, and there's like a feedback form and certificate and everything at the end to say you've done it, um, which is great for CVs and um, personal statements and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, Future Frontline is um, a company that's um, completely free. It's for inspiring um, young people to work in healthcare. And there's lots of different, we do lots and lots of different web, webinars. We do um, multidisciplinary webinars so you can see how different teams work together. Um, but yeah, the, today's is all about the dental. Um, and yeah, do feel free to share with us on Instagram. I think we're on everything, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, it'll be Future Frontline. So it will be great to see what you, yeah, there we go. So, um, what you think, we love feedback and seeing what everyone gets up to. Um, so today is going to be about all the roles in dentistry, just sort of an overview. Not everyone always realises that there's more than just sort of dentist. So this is a great way to sort of see all the careers out there, see what might be for you. Um, these are our speakers today. Kim, unfortunately, has had a family emergency, so won't be joining us unless she can get away. And um, Dr. Parsons, I think, should be joining us shortly. Um, skip over him for now and we'll start with um, hygienist. So this is my friend Fiona from uni um, and she's just gonna talk through a bit of sort of hygiene stuff. Um, so just start Fee with sort of who you are, how you ended up here, that kind of thing. Okay, so bear with if this rambles and stuff. But so as Kat said, I'm Fiona. I trained at Sheffield with her uh, recently. We both graduated last year. So we've been in the job for a year now. Uh, before that, I was a dental nurse, which I kind of fell into. My dad was a dentist and I needed a job. Um, so I ended up working alongside him and he did um, cosmetic and anxious patients. And I really enjoyed that side of things, decided that I wanted to be able to treat my own patients, but I didn't want to have to do root canals and extractions and have the added stress and the added two years at uni. So decided I wanted to do hygiene therapy, had to do a couple more qualifications and then got into that. Um, so that's kind of my very random route into it um it wasn't the most straightforward route that it could have been but it worked out well for me um so that's my personal introduction brilliant um talk us through what a hygienist does um what's your day-to-day -day hygiene day like so as I, so I have my day separated, so dual qualified hygiene therapist, but I do have separate days for it. So it keeps it nice and straightforward for me. So as a hygienist, I take care of patients' oral health and prevention of gum disease and treatment of gum disease. Um, I've recently moved on to a new system of the guided biofilm therapy, which is very exciting as well. Um, but my general kind of day to day is I get at least 30 minute appointments with my patients and um, that includes kind of any treatment so all the scaling and sort of things um, but also a big focus on teaching them how to care for their own teeth at home because that's the main thing um, and I, I'd say that's the most important part of a hygienist role actually um, is trying to teach patients how to care for themselves because then that limits how much we have to do. 
Um, and it's really nice because you see patients really regularly. Um, so any patients with more advanced lung disease, you see every three months. Other patients you tend to see every six months. And having only been at my practice for 10 months now, I've already got like a good rapport with patients that I've now seen three times for recalls. Um, and I find that's my favorite bit of the hygiene side is getting to see their progress, getting to help them care for things, and also just getting to see people like more regularly. Just kind of answered the second question, the first question there. But. Perfect. Um, yeah, what, what, what else do you enjoy? What do you, um, what, you know, makes your days good? I'd, I'd say it's it's really that it's getting to see patients um I mean hygiene it's it's got its pros and its cons with patient enjoyment side of things because sometimes like they don't like the feeling of the scaler and there's a lot of water and stuff so you do get the general grumbles but in the whole patients tend to be a bit happier with the hygienists than like they get a bit more stressed out with dentists um, and I feel like I've got a bit more time in my hygiene appointments to really like dig into things and like get to know the patients. Um, and it feels more like I'm helping them to not need treatment rather than just like treating things that have already happened and gone wrong. Well, um, and what would you say are your top tips for people who want to do um, hygiene or who are just about to qualify or anything like that? What are your top tips? um for people who want to go into hygiene I'd say the best thing is just to be able to do some work experience go and shadow a hygienist so that you actually know because I feel like a lot of people just don't know what a hygienist is especially like before you're like in your 20s because you don't tend to need to see a hygienist yourself so learning what the actual day-to-day -day is because a lot of it is the same thing so if you don't know it could become kind of a little bit like routine and stuff like that so I think the more that you can know about what your day-to-day -day in the job would be the better prepared you are um, and also it's great for um, when you're training the more you know before you go in the easier you'll slot into things um, people who are due to qualify I would say accepting that university teaches you how to pass the exams and how to get qualified you then actually learn everything when you're in the job. So, and people know that people who are hiring you will um, understand that. Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, B. And um, oh, Lou is asking the differences between dentist and hygienist. So, this is actually a really good question. This is part of the reason we wanted to do this webinar because it's so, it's one of these things that not very many people um know about um we'll kind of cover it and if you feel like we haven't finished it by the end Lulu, let me know and I'll I'll go back over it um the therapist is the next bit so I've actually separated hygienist and therapist because some people do work only as one or the other um but nowadays most people are qualified um dual qualified so both Fiona and I are dual qualified and we both do both um, so we sort of already introduced you to Fee but I'll let her run through what a therapist does on top of what a hygienist does so I'll in light of that question as well I'll try and take it a bit more back to basics because obviously it's difficult we're coming in with all of this knowledge ingrained in us so it's easy for us to skip over a bit so anything that you want clarified please just pop up like that I'd say the simple way to separate the hygiene is focusing on gum disease. That's all that a stereotypical, like just qualified hygienist will do is um, all the gum disease side of things. Therapist is the more um, middle ground between a hygienist and a dentist. We focus more on the, our, our scope focuses more on being able to treat kids very thoroughly. Um, and to be able to do basic restorative work on adults um, so kind of all the fillings and that side of things um, but we don't do anything that involves a laboratory um, without further training and stuff like whitening um, and as I said at the start no root canals no extractions which would have been my least favorite things to do anyways so I'm glad I don't have to do those. Um, and what do you enjoy when you're doing your therapy days what what's good when you're doing that? I'd say that's a very mixed bag. 
what I didn't realize going into this is quite like for all therapy is a reduced scope from a dentist there's still so much variety and things can go from zero to 100 real fast yeah (laughs) so sometimes I love that unpredictability sometimes I love my hygiene days because you just know a bit more what to expect um so root canals on children um so we don't children um deciduous teeth you don't perform root canal therapy on um but you can do what's called a pulpotomy so it's kind of a a mid-ground but it's definitely nowhere near what a root canal is um so no still don't do those still don't have to do those thankfully Um, and the other thing about pulpotomies is it's one of the things you're taught and one of the things you can do um but very few therapists ever actually do them um very few dentists actually do them from personal experience every dentist I've spoken to it's a very some really believe in them and some just don't ever think that they work and aren't worth doing um but yeah I'd say I enjoy getting to do various different things I enjoy when I can treat kids and you can get them through treatment and they come out so much better off for it I as anyone probably when you treat a kid and they are just not wanting to be there probably not my favorite thing to do um and getting to do the more kind of aesthetic side of things is something I've got a personal interest in and that's where I'm going forward to so getting to just make someone happier when they leave the appointment than when they can come in and and in terms of sort of tips for people who want to become therapists what kind of thing would you advise I'd say getting to know the difference between the therapist and the dentist to make sure which one you're really leaning to um so sorry I'm just going to answer this question because I get sidetracked very easily um so dental therapists treating adults so we can treat a lot with adults in terms of restorative work and that is the bulk of my therapy days actually is doing basically all the dentists in my practice refer all of their fillings to me um, especially NHS ones um, so I do treat adults for that you can also do training in whitening um, if you want to provide that as well and it's really just finding um, the right people the right colleagues the right dentists to work with who are happy balancing between you to utilize your scope to the fullest um is a really key relationship that's something that if you want to go into therapy you need to learn whether you're going to be happy doing that because a lot of it does rely on that working relationship of the dentist being happy to utilize you um which as long as you get the right relationship and you're willing to push it it's great it works so well but it does need a bit more of that understanding whereas if you're a full dentist yourself you have a lot more control over your own career and your own day-to-day yeah so I think something to be said for sort of therapy is you can treat adults and actually we do 70 to 75 percent of what dentists do the only the only things we don't do are root canals extractions of adult teeth and then anything with labs so dentures crowns bridges things like that um so in terms of sort of furthering your career as a therapist like Fee was talking about there's quite a lot of aesthetic things you can do um and you can kind of get into that um whitening you can do additional training for things like that but just in terms of working on adults for therapy a lot of what you do is the dentist will see a patient for a checkup will go they need this filling doing this filling doing this filling doing they come to you and you do the fillings and then they come back in six months for their checkup. So that's kind of how that relationship works, usually in practice, if that makes sense. Um, so in terms of nursing, um, both Fiona and Alison were dental nurses before they do what they do now. So I'll let you, whoever wants to go first, Alison, Fee, whoever, just run through how you... Um, how you ended up being a nurse um a friend of mine was a dental nurse and they were short staffed we were going back 30 years ago and um asked me if I wanted some work and I said yeah so I went along and I've done it ever since here we are yes here I am and 
obviously I became um, head nurse and then I was practice manager somewhere else and it got too much for me. I didn't get any support. So I left and then continued as a dental nurse um, and I became head nurse and then a practice manager again. But this is a bit different. Yeah. Um, and Fee, do you want to explain how you became a dental nurse? Um, so mine was a very uh, different way of getting into dental nursing in that I went to university and hated my degree and my dad was a dentist and owned a dental practice and said I can only drop out of university if I became a dental nurse. So it's not the most motivational reason for becoming a dental nurse, um, but it ended up being fantastic for me and definitely the right thing to do. Um, it meant that I got to learn a, more, a lot more about the day-to-day -day dentistry and that got me to the career I am now. But actually my time as a dental nurse, I still really enjoyed the job. Um, the main role of a dental nurse is basically making it so that the dentist day can run as smoothly as possible. And that involves a wide variety of things. Um, obviously the main thing that you see dental nurses doing is all the chair side stuff. So assisting through an appointment, but the actual kind of like underneath of the dental practice the dental nurses are just vital with so many things um which I am also glad that I had that experience because it makes me so much more grateful for my nurses now and um, they have to do everything from assisting to organizing the diaries with the help of the reception team and the practice managers um, they have to do decon so decontaminating all the instruments making sure that the surgeries are always stocked one of the nurses will be in charge of doing all the ordering there's so many practice policies that they have to follow and just keeping everything running. Yeah, absolutely. We would be blessed without our nurses, wouldn't we? Um, so, yeah. What would you say you enjoyed about nursing when you were a nurse, Alison? And the patients, I think. Yeah. I think, you know, you build up a really good, you know, a professional relationship up with them and um, the families, you get to meet different people. Um, and I think it's a great achievement when you see so many children who have high caries and then they're walking out with, you know, that smile again. The families are really happy. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And some of the treatments, not all of them. Yeah, not, not everything's fun. Not everything, no. But yeah, lots of things. Um, and what would you say sort of in terms of tips for anyone who might want to be a dental nurse in the future? Um, I'd just say ask lots of questions, you know, do a lot of research. Yeah, um, everyone's there for help. Try and get a bit of work experience somewhere. I'm sure there's lots of practices out there that will support. Yeah, definitely. Um, lovely Mr P, as we know him, has just managed to join us. So I will go back and let him introduce himself to you if you wouldn't mind Mr P hello can you hear me? hello can you hear me we can hear you we can hear you good oh sorry yes there was a bit of lay um getting on i was trying since about 22 don't worry this and uh, for some reason yeah it, and it's it you sort of i can't really hear everybody i don't know whether yeah because people are mute that's fine so what was the question just just tell us a bit about yourself how did you end up becoming a dentist what do you enjoy yeah well <laughs> it's quite a long story but um, I used to work um, for Eli Lilly, which was a pharmaceutical company, for about nine years. And I was deciding on what I would like to do um, as a career. And I've always been interested in medicine um, and dentistry. There's a friend of mine called Gareth Morris, who went to university to Leeds to do dentistry. Um, and he went um, when he was 18, so whilst I was still working. And um, I was talking to him about it and he said well why don't you come and spend a week with me in my Camberley surgery and I did and I just liked the, the self-containment of it and um, uh, talking to people and also having that control you know um, of 
being able to diagnose problems for people and also to cure people fairly quickly, uh, which you can in dentistry, unlike, you know, GP will refer somebody, will obviously hear about the outcome, but won't necessarily be involved. Um, so I just like the fact that I would be able to treat uh, somebody myself um, and do all the little bits as well, like take the radiograph, um, give the local. So I just like the self-containment. So then, um, then I got an um, um, interview um, for the dental schools, and I came through an unconventional way. And how A levels, um, I did a um, higher national diploma in applied biology. And that basically, the qualification uh, there allowed me to get onto. And I got straight in those days, there was first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth BDS. But the second BDS was the year of entry. Yeah. So, um, and then. Uh, so, yeah, and that was it. So I went to dental school and. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was it. And I really enjoyed the course. <laughs> and I went on uh, working, I did my vocational practice, which in practice for 11 years. And then I got the opportunity to teach because I did some uh, teaching part time uh, on clinic, uh, observing students. And then I got a phone call to say they need a full time dentist in hygiene and therapy, um, somebody to be a clinic coordinator. And that's what I did. And uh, that's, that's the status. And I just enjoyed uh, being able to give a bit of practice, be able to get involved with the teaching um, and keeping up with my dentistry as well. And uh, that was it, really. Um, I just enjoyed all those uh, sort of aspects of, of examining. So, yeah. so in terms of what like a day to day looks like for a dentist, what would you say that was? Day to day. Well, I think in general practice, certainly. Um, I think it's just being prepared. Um, I find that I used to get into work a bit earlier. And um, used to look at the notes if I knew some patients were coming in and just being prepared. I've got, prep, I've got this coming in, I've got all surgery. And also communication. So sort of talking to the receptionist, talking to my uh, nurses. Uh, or my nurse, and just to say, okay, this is what we're doing today. Um, and I just think it's important communication all the way through with you know, with your team um, to make the whole process um, easier for you. And obviously, there of course, a lot of computers to familiarise yourself with the, the computer systems um, so you can use them efficiently. Um, so in my, in my view, it's just been having that Preparedness, uh, sort of like knowing what you do, really, um, and being confident. You know, being confident with your staff because at the end of the day, you know, you're they look to you. You know, well, so but being calm as well. Well, if something does happen, you've got to be calm. You know, there's no point getting. Uh, anxious about things you just stay calm and hopefully you can resolve things right yeah. i'm going to jump back now to oh and um, so as alison said she is practice manager at one of the practices i um work at so She's just going to talk through sort of what a practice manager does and um, how you end up being a practice manager, which is not one of those things most people ever expect to be. No one joins dentistry thinking I will be a practice manager, um, but quite a lot of people end up being a practice manager. So um, what do you tend to do, Alison? Um, I obviously um, a smooth running of the practice um, look after all the compliance, CQC. Um, staff. I'm also head nurse, so I oversee. Um, I'm head of um, decontamination for cross infection. Um, I'm just part of a team. I don't see myself as any different. I just see myself as part of a team and we all work together. I just have a few more roles to add on. And I think 
because I've been doing it for such a long time, I've become educated over the years and learned an awful lot. Um, I've just become, I don't know, it's just part of my role. I just really enjoy it. Brilliant. Um, and you were saying do like all the things that sort of keep the practice just running day to day. So all the paperwork, things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I have something like 40 plus files to look after, which is hideous. <laughs> Some days. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, years ago, it never used to be like this. It used to be, you know, you had things to adhere to. Now you have a file for a file. And I, yeah, a lot of it is important. You know, but I spend every day on the computer. Yeah. Um, I'm quite old school where I have files as well as the compliance suite. But I also do reception, um, which I enjoy. I, I love every part of it. And it does get stressful. It does become difficult at times. But yeah. the overall, I love it. I do. I really enjoy my job. Well, thanks, Alison. So I tried to track down a lab tech, um, but they are not people who necessarily enjoy social interaction so I'll just sort of run through what a lab tech does and um, when you're making when you're making anything to go in the mouth that you can't do immediately in the surgery you have to send it to a lab and your lab techs are the people who will make your dentures your crowns your bridges implants anything that we then place into the mouth a lab tech makes um, so they don't always sort of interact with patients, but they definitely can do. You can go and visit a lab if you want to check something out. Sometimes they pop into practices to check things are fitting well and all of that sort of thing. Um, where am I? Uh, sorry, just have you included um, clinical lab techs as well? Not as, a separate, not as a separate section. Go on. Just because I've worked with a clinical lab technician before, so I thought that's... Um, with you saying about seeing patients and stuff, a lab technician can go on and do further training to become a clinical lab technician. And that's mainly um, doing dentures and stuff from what I've seen. Um, and the one that I worked with um, came in once a week and saw his own patient start to finish. Um, if they had no teeth, then they only had to see him. If they had remaining teeth as well as doing partial, but so he would be doing a partial denture, they just had to get signed off by a dentist as well. And he found that gave him a really good, um, he had all the background with all the dentures. So he knew exactly what he needed from the patient and from the appointments. And then he did it start to finish himself. He saw the patient, made the denture, fit the denture, and he found that worked really well. Well, thank you. Um, so orthodontic therapist is a sort of side step to a dental therapist. Um, what they do is... Um, a lot they work alongside an orthodontist so that's a specialist dentist who works with braces um, and they can place braces they can take braces off they can take molds um, and generally just assist the orthodontist in making that treatment go smoother um, orthodontics can take quite a long time as I'm sure some of you know from having braces it can go sort of anywhere from six months to well I know people who've had it for sort of six years if if you want so an orthodontic therapist the orthodontist the dentist will do the plan and then the orthodontic therapist can sort of take on um some of the sort of additional steps after that um a couple of other roles and then i'll go through and answer some questions um some practices have a treatment coordinator that's someone you can go in he'll talk you through sort of how your treatment's going to work um and things like that with a uh, lead nurse which is what Alison does that's just being in charge of all the nurses quite often that puts you in charge of ordering and um, making sure the nurses are all doing their roles properly making sure everything's done and then practice owners you can own a you can own a practice you don't have to be a dentist or in a practice but a lot of practice owners are the main dentist as well Um, just run through some specialties so all of these specialties you can specialize in if you've done dentistry, if you do BDS, um, and some of them you can specialize in if you do therapy or you can say you have a special interest. So um, pediatrics is children, anyone under the age of 18. Um, 
therapists see quite a lot of children generally but you can always do additional training um, and get your postgrad diploma in pediatrics um, endodontics is root canals it's inside the tooth removing the nerve prosthodontics is anything that we put in so that's specializing in dentures things like that orthodontics like i said is braces oral surgery can be anything from taking teeth out um, fixing broken jaws all sorts of different things periodontics is gums dealing with gum disease as a specialty again hygienist therapist dentists all do a lot of this in their day-to-day -day, but you can specialize um, oral medicine is uh, dealing with spots lesions cancers things like that um, a lot of biopsying and seeing what's going on special care is working usually in community for people who have access problems or um additional needs so you do quite a lot of special needs people in wheelchairs people with difficulty accessing care basically um, and oral and maxillofacial deals with the whole face so that means being dual qualified as both a doctor and a dentist um, and that a lot of that is that kind of rebuilding faces stuff you see on tv right let me get some questions Um, found for the therapist and hygienist their deals are very repetitive with scale and polishes it's not always the case um it really depends where you end up so it yeah it depends on where you work and what kind of thing you do um i have one day where i only do hygiene and i have days when i do nothing but back to back therapy so it's really you know and that's that's something always something different so really that's depends on where you work that's less about the job role because it does give you that flexibility and more about what practice works for you um what uni has more places for a level students compared to places for dental nurses it is a very competitive course you are right and um, lots of places now are looking more at a levels than um, dental nursing i went straight from a levels i went to sheffield fee is the flip fee did nursing and then went to sheffield and um, it's just a case of looking at um, the entry requirements and seeing whether they're looking more now towards a levels or whether they're still looking at nursing and just just applying there aren't that many places that um teach hygiene and therapy so just have a little look around see see where you fancy is it true that if you drink pineapple juice before getting teeth taken out it helps it heal faster i don't know anyone know the answer to that one mr p i, I wouldn't have thought so but um, well you know, you know the pineapple juice is quite acidic i can say that um but no i would normally would recommend hot salt water mouth washes um you know keep your mouth clean maybe even some corsodil uh mouth rinse before and just to lower the bacterial load and it's all about um aftercare as well sort of reducing things like not smoking not having any alcohol and just keeping your mouth clean but uh, funny enough um i think rhubarb because it's also acidic oral medicine sometimes they use it for some tongue conditions to lower the uh, um it's sometimes people get covering or coating their tongue uh, and often I, I know christine yeoman used to say oh you know just drink some pie um some rhubarb juice so pineapple juice is quite acidic so in that respect there's a possibility it might it might help <laughs> I didn't know that you learn something new every day don't you and um, main modules covered in a dentistry degree and is it more clinical practice or content examination and um, so all dental degrees are five years um, and your first sort of two and a half three years are quite sort of content heavy and less clinical practice um, and then the further up the years you get the more time you spend um, 
doing clinical things. So I'd say it's it's pretty much 50-50. But early on, there's a lot of sort of content you have to learn. You have to do all your anatomy and everything. And then later you get, it's more about your clinical skills. I would just add that that does seem to be something that varies greatly across different universities um, from what we heard from different students and stuff. I know that obviously everyone has to have a base level when they graduate, but I know that Sheffield definitely had a lot higher targets in terms of clinical experience than some universities did. So it might differ slightly. I found Sheffield was rated very highly for the clinical time that you got apart from us during COVID. Yeah, um, it's definitely one of those things to look at. If you're looking at applying to dentistry, you need to look at the course and see what the setup is. A lot of places will have purely clin- uh, purely content years for the first two years and you won't do any clinics. Um, some places much more integrated. So really it's a question of whether you want to do all your content and then do your clinics or if you want sort of a mix of both going through. Um, it's just about finding what's right for you and what's what they're done at each uni um, I'll make a point as well just to reassure people not where we're learning each university probably had quite a different program but generally the same but now with the GDC we have a preparing um, practice document which has it lists um, all the outcomes that every uh, dental student, hygiene therapy student, whatever you're doing, nursing, whatever, uh, at what you need to have before you can actually qualify. So that preparative practice covers all universities. The university uh, has to reach those objectives, okay, in order to be able, well, to get signed off as a university that will allow somebody to qualify with a degree. For example, in this case, so Everybody, all students across the UK will have the same outcome. So you can teach it, they can teach it in any other, they can teach it where they can, but they've got to get to those outcomes regardless. And they do get inspected and they will have to provide evidence that this is what they're doing. Uh, with Sheffield, yes, I agree. It, um, it is quite practically orientated. Um, and obviously you will do your, what I would call, um, um, I suppose sciences in the um, first year, and then material science will blend into that. You're all me- oral anatomy, your normal anatomy, all things like that. And, and that, that is definitely integrated more now into different subjects. It's covered. I'd say it's probably more just because you learn, you, you have got to sit down and, and learn this, you know, sort of anatomy and anatomy and the press. They try to interlink it a lot better now, yeah. at Sheffield. Yeah. So you get a good, a better understanding. Thanks, Mr. P. Um, therapists, yep, yeah, can do composite bonding. It's an aesthetic treatment. So yeah, you same as doing any other filling, really. Um, how do you become an orthodontic therapist? Um, I think there are a couple of unis that do teach orthodontic therapy um but I also know people who have done it as more of a sort of an apprenticeship and um, where they do it on the job and they have to take the exams like sort of simultaneously but you can kind of work at the same time um oral medicine and dental hygiene and therapy so oral medicine is a specialist dental area about um diseases of the mouth basically um and dental hygiene and therapy is a subsection of dentistry where you deal with sort of everything that I realize does not make it very clear um but oral medicine is very much dealing specifically with sort of cancers lesions and um, diseases problems like that whereas um hygiene and therapy is more working in practice dealing with the patients um on a day-to-day if qualified as a UK dentist, you're able to work abroad. Um, it depends where it is. Um, if you do a degree abroad, you have to take your testing in the UK to be able to practice. Um, and the same goes vice versa. I know that if you want to be a dentist in Australia, say, you do have to take additional testing, but not everywhere does. So that's a kind of see how it goes on each case basis. 
what is involved work experience in a dental practice um so it depends again it depends where you go um a lot of shadowing i would just go see what they do in the day to day um ask lots and lots of questions see what their sort of diary looks like see how they interact with patients and um, but mostly it'll be sort of shadowing seeing what they do on, a, on the daily basis what is the worth like work life balance for a dentist um i personally would always say it depends on the dentist um, I know dentists who work 24 seven and never have any time off. I equally know dentists who have a fantastic work life balance and are really good at balancing their family um, and their career. So it's it's up to you if you work in a specialty or if you work in an emergency that requires on call. That's the only time you don't really work sociable hours. But most dental professionals work a sort of nine to five as standard. Um, what would make my personal statement stand out for dental health? No, go ahead, Mister. No, I was getting, I was getting, I was getting it in there because you, you, you asked about work-life balance of a dentist uh, and I'm a dentist. Uh, I think uh, yes, I think it's important that you have other things as well. But you need to ensure wherever you're working that um, people about what what your expectations as well. It's not all about you know, sort of flogging yourself to death. Okay, so you do need to build other things um, like sport, um, enjoy your weekends. And I used to do my acting and stage work. I find time to do that. And when I had a family, I used to spend time with the family. So it is important to get that balance. If you do, um, if you do maxillofacial surgery, then it is very hard to work. Um, you are spending a lot of time on call, especially in the early years. But then in those when you're in your 20s and, and, and that's your goal is to become a consultant you'll put up with that um so be prepared you know a lots of staying in hospitals and, and stuff like that so yeah but it is important it is important because otherwise you'll burn out all right and uh, to uh, a dentist early because they get very stressed i managed 30 years without too much stress <laughs> not too much stress only when you were teaching me. What would make my personal statement stand out for dental therapy and hygiene? Um, I think explaining that you know the difference between therapy and being a dentist, that's a big one, um, and why you would choose therapy instead of dentistry or what, what you think you can gain from therapy. And other than that, it's just showing that you have those um, interpersonal skills that can't be taught clinical skills can be taught interpersonal skills can't so it's really about sort of showing that I was going to do an entirely separate webinar on sort of interviewing for dental schools hopefully in November so do come along to that one as well um, additional training for whitening uh, as long as you want it to be I did a one day course um, really great what work experience would you suggest for aspiring dentists, therapists, and nurses, and how would you go about getting it? Um, so shadowing is the most valuable thing you can do, just spending time in a dental practice. Um, hopefully you're all registered as patients somewhere, and it's just a case of saying to your dentist, hi, would you mind if I come and sit in for a week, you know, and if that's all right with them. If not, try the other practices in your area and um, just keep asking. Um, I had to try a couple of places before somewhere would have me to shadow. And it's just a case of trying until you get somewhere that will let you sit in. Uh, as a hygiene therapist, is there ever a time you feel as though you should have done a dentistry degree, especially as I'm choosing between the two and struggling? Really good question. Um, I haven't talked about how I ended up being a therapist but it's quite a sort of funny route I actually applied to dentistry and um, I was going to go and do dentistry and I had an offer and I was ready to start and then after my A-levels I got three B's instead of three A's and at the time I thought it was the absolute end of the world um, and Sheffield rang me and they said we've got this course that we think you might like it's called dental therapy um 
why don't you come and have a little look? So I went down and asked lots of questions and now I wouldn't have it any other way. I think what you really need to think about is how much responsibility you want to have in your life. As a therapist, there's always someone above you. There's always someone you can go to. Um, think about what kind of treatments you might want to be doing. Do you want to do root canals? Do you want to make dentures? Or are you quite happy doing fillings and seeing kids? Um, how long do you want to study for? Um, therapy is three years. Also, Catherine, I think. Yeah, nip in there because I've, I've been on the, I've been on it with many interviews, and I, I also do you plan. I did it this year, I did it this year. But be absolutely definite with your passions, right? You know, and be, you know. Very important part of the team, and you do get quite a diversity of work to do. But now a lot of people do want to do dentistry, but it's the grass always is green. It's, it's, it is hard work, but be clear on your passions. Yes, if that's your goal, you want to actually have that opportunity to use bed. That's fine, and if it's necessary, but hygiene therapy you can own your own business. You can work independently. Again, open communication, but also, but. Be sure of your passions. Don't go into an interview thinking, well, actually, I want to do this, so I can step stone straight into dentistry because I'm afraid it, it yeah, it, it, it does really go yeah. too well in an interview. Yeah, no, it, I think when interviewing for one or the other, um, just it's very clear if your heart lies somewhere else so if you are interviewing for hygiene therapy but really you want to do dentistry it's quite evident so you do need to make your mind up sort of before you apply can i jump in as well yeah sorry um just because obviously so kat's got the background of applying for dentistry and ended up doing hygiene therapy and loving it i very much had this same dilemma when i was deciding what i wanted to do especially with a dad as a dentist and constantly getting asked why don't you do dentistry are you going to be a dentist all that stuff it's something that I've constantly had to justify to people for better or for worse I love hygiene therapy 99% of the time but there will always be that question in yourself even now and even after I've been certain of when you get slightly frustrated that you are answering to someone else so sometimes you are following someone else's prescription yes you can alter it but there's always things like that that you don't have full autonomy we still don't have prescribing rights so trying to chase dentists to prescribe us their local anesthetic and stuff like that there are annoyances but there's an annoyance in every job would I trade it for the amount of extra stress and responsibility that being the main clinician comes with not a chance but there will always be times in my day that I'm like oh but I could just but it's just working out what's going to be the better balance for you, um, which is really difficult until you know. So that's why we're saying about shadowing a lot and talking to people in the jobs and stuff. When I was a dental nurse, I just, it happened to be that the people I worked with, the hygienists were the ones with the better work-life balance. It was easier for them to switch off at the end of the day because their patients were very much, their problems were sorted within that one session sort of thing, whereas the dentist, it was that ongoing thing and the dentists I work with now sometimes have trouble trouble separating themselves so there's there's pros and cons to both you get a lot more autonomy as a dentist but I feel like as a therapist you can still use a wide scope it you can still keep your things interesting you can still do further training but you always have someone to ask the questions to because every patient has their own dentist as well so there's someone else that's also involved in their care that makes sense yeah I think as everyone said the most important thing is just that you really really weigh it up for yourself um, and make the decision that is right for you um, and that comes from talking to people um, shadowing seeing what you think you might like with your future basically um, are oral health and oral medicine different? Yes. So oral medicine, like I said, is the study of sort of diseases. That's things like studying cancer and stuff. Um, oral health is just generally making sure mouths are healthy. Um, so giving brushing advice, flossing advice, um, regular checkups, things like that all 
contribute to good oral health. Undergrad biomed thinking doing postgrad dentistry, is there some similarity in modules in dentistry? And um, yes, yeah, so quite a lot of early dentistry is anatomy and the science behind it. And um, so if that's the kind of thing you've done already, that will really um, overlap. Um, but I think anything sort of biomed you can take into dentistry. Not sure what to put on my personal statement as hobbies. Could I say knitting and link to manual dexterity? What hobbies are ideal as a dentist? Um, things that you can <laughs> turn, turn your brain off at the end of the day. Um, this is one that gets asked all the time. So demonstrating manual dexterity is important, but it's not the be all and end all. So yeah, put knitting if you genuinely enjoy knitting. Put playing an instrument if you genuinely enjoy doing it but as 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 everyone said it, it'll become obvious if you get to an interview if that's not really um something that you're actually enjoying uh dentist and therapy and hygiene are salary similar it depends it depends where you work it depends what kind of work you do um they can be similar but it, it really just it varies quite a lot between places um, and between kinds of jobs um, what kind of hobbies did I put on my personal statement um, playing the piano which I love um, and embroidery which I also genuinely do love um, and I actually took some to an interview with me um, to prove it so um, yeah of course you did Kat <laughs> How do I talk reflectively about my dental work experience? Um, I think you need to take on board what you've learned and have a real understanding of what the dentist's job is um, and you understanding what that would mean for you. You know, um, it's not just... Um, not just, oh, I saw this and I saw this. It's more... I observed this and I found this interesting and would be intrigued to try and do this or um, it's, you know, less about ticking things you've seen and more about what you learned from what you saw um, in terms of reflectively. To become a dentist, five years of dental school, how many years does it take to become fully qualified as an orthodontist? Um, I think it depends a little bit where you do it I'm not sure exactly Mr P would you say two or three years I'm not sure exactly how long it takes to become an orthodontist but a couple more years on after what A levels did you take do I wish I took different oh. Give me. Yes. Yeah, sorry, you, you were breaking up. Uh, did you ask about Oh, the connection's not very good. No. You're breaking, You're breaking up, up, Mr. P. No. Mm. Connections, uh, but I really can speak. Uh, if you can hear me, I have a question. No, it's not. It's not very clear, Mr. P. Um, I will see if Mr. P can come back to answer that question. If not, I will carry on. I took chemistry biology and freight french do i wish i took different ones um no because i took what i needed to but also stuff i enjoyed is it possible to do dental hygiene therapy diploma and then get into dentistry or do you have to complete a three-year degree yes it is entirely possible we know people who are doing that at the moment um it will depend a little bit where you apply to dentistry as to whether they accept the diploma as equivalent to a degree but most places do um, but you will still have to do the full five years of dentistry after doing the hygiene therapy there's no currently there's no way to decrease the amount of time spent doing the dentistry course 
even though you've basically done the first bit of it. Sorry. No, it's good. Um, as a dentist, can you also work as a therapist? Um, you can, but it's one of these grey areas that the GDC are looking at tightening up at the moment it's a very gray area in that you you can if you are registered um but uh if you're a dentist you don't need to work as a hygiene therapist because you can already do everything they can do um locuming is where you don't work specifically at one practice you just work as and when quite often through an agency and um, people sometimes do that when they come back off maternity leave or they don't want something permanent you know they only want to work as and when um, included GCSE um, it's hard to say whether you should include art if you haven't done it recently or not um, I would see if you can find something you've done more recently that works better. Um, this is going to sound like a funny one, but video gaming is actually a good manual dexterity indicator. Um, Modelling, anything like that, if you've done it more recently, is probably better. When writing a personal statement, how do you explain a hobby in terms of skills? What do you want to do? Um... I, th I think try not to be sort of like this skill shows me this and this skill shows that. Um, just don't know how how best to sort of explain it. Um, um, kind of. I'd say some of it, you have to assume that the person reading your personal statement has a certain level of understanding. If you say yeah. that you enjoy something that needs manual dexterity, you don't necessarily have to say that it shows manual dexterity. They will, if you say you play piano, then the person reading it will know that that therefore means that you have the manual dexterity. Um, and it can kind of come across really forced if you write it in the way of, I do this for this reason. And this is like, you don't need to spoon feed them as long as it's still like clear if that makes sense yeah I think she's exactly right that you don't need some sort of like you don't need to signpost it um just you know university admissions tutors aren't stupid they're very smart so um, just write about what you've enjoyed and what genuinely why you know I like playing the piano because I like that it relieved my stress it was better use of words for me to say that than it was to say and also it means I'm good with my hands because the the degree dentistry and hygiene therapy are stressful courses so actually being able to show that you have you just are a rounded person and can cope with that can help just as much as saying that you have the skills to physically do the degree. Uh, in fact, one of the questions that Sheffield asks you is, this is a very stressful course. How do you deal with stress or with having to do multiple things at the same time? Yeah. Um, in the interview for DTH, did they give you a manual dexterity task? Um, it Again, it depends where you are on the kind of interviews they do. Um, some places I interviewed did have a manual dexterity task, some places don't. Um, it'll just kind of be a case of finding out. But if there is a task, don't think about it too much. Don't worry too much. Um, you can improve your manual dexterity over time. Um, what's more important is that they like you as a person when and they kind of see that you really want it um, just skip the one from ss about how should i organize my personal statement what subtopics um it's a good question um i would I, sorry yeah. i just had a thought when i was looking at that because the only um the first one that i applied to was sheffield and they don't ask 
or at least when we applied, they didn't ask for a personal statement. They had a list of questions and they wanted short paragraphs. And actually, I think that could be useful as a basis for writing a personal statement for other places. If you look on their application form, because it was like, why do you want to do this course um, and, and stuff like that, um, that that might help as a basis. Thanks, Faith. Um, in person, would I be able to talk about this? Yeah, absolutely. You can you can use virtual work experience just as much as you can use real work experience. And um, what did you learn about dentistry today? You know, maybe you learn about some jobs you didn't know existed. Maybe you learn about how important it's going to be to manage your stress levels. And um, even if it's not sort of in-person work experience, which since COVID has been difficult, um, you can reflect on all kinds of things in your personal statement is really about reflecting on what you have available to you. Um, I think that's all the questions. If there are any more, I will, I'll stop recording um, and, and,